Hi everyone, uh, don't know if you can all hear me, my name is Mia, I'm the uh, industry programmer for the London Short Film Festival this year. Uh, welcome to the, the first event of our uh, vibrant industry program. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Vicky, uh, who is here from Binger, to give you a presentation about what Binger's about, what's coming up in the future. Um, we're going to have uh, a little break after the slides to uh, do a bit of question and answering, and then we're going to see some trailers. Okay, thanks. Hello. If I speak like this, do you hear me? No, I'm not very well. No. So I should use the microphone? Yes, please. Okay. So I have to use the microphone and operate this? Yeah. Okay. Let's work like this. All right. Well, welcome. Thank you for attending. Um, this is the, my first presentation uh, for Binger uh, ever, because I joined the Binger in um, late September this year. Um, so uh, I hope it will be clear enough for you um, what we do. Um, then we also, of course, have a website, and, and in the end, you can, you know, at, at your own leisure, you can look up what we do on our website. But let me just walk you through the slides, um, and then, um, you know, um, as opposed to what she just said, I'm going to first show the trailer, and then we're going to have some answer and question. I'm going to try and speak in between the espresso machine. All right. So, finger. What we are. Uh, well, you can read it for yourself, but I'll just walk you through it. What we are is a, um, a development center, an international development center, international in terms of partners or the participants are from all over the world, and the advisors are from all over the world. Um, we cater to directors, writers, and producers. A lot of the people that attend Bing are actually by the directors, and the producers attend as creative producers in a lab we call the writer slash creative producers lab in the fall. So that's just to give you an idea of where these people are situated. Um, you can see we have labs. I just mentioned it before. We have a director's lab, which is the first half of the year, and we have a writer's lab in the second half of the year, roughly. Um, Binger is going through some changes. As of this January, it's no longer a gov fully government-funded institute. So we are redesigning ourselves, meaning that we want to stick as much as possible to what we do best, offering you labs and workshops and a la carte possibilities. Um, but we, we're um, reshaping the way we're doing it. The lab, the director's lab, used to be a full-time program with a group of about 15 people from beginning to end you're in the same group. Now we're opening it up, making it the, the different workshops, making them accessible to people outside of the director's lab as well. So that makes it much more interesting for, I think, for um, filmmakers to come and attend a workshop at Binger as part of a director's lab, but just one workshop, just cater to your need. If you want to do something with Judith Weston, you don't have to participate in the whole director's lab, you just come for Judith Weston. You apply, you hope to get chosen, and then you're at the Binger for just that workshop. Or you can do three workshops, or you're, you know, you're, it's much um, more flexible, I think it is. Um, but like I said, we, we um, the lab series are quite intensive, the writers, slash creative producers lab which starts in October. That is still a uh, beginning to end lab for um, four months or three and a half months, which you start with a group and end with a group and you move towards the next phase of your script, usually going to a next draft of your script. Uh, Binger is a challenge. Yes, it's a challenge. Well, you, can, you can read that. Um, what's really important, I think that's what we, yeah, Binger is not, um, it's a development center, it's not a school, it's not um, so much an educational center, it doesn't teach you what to do or how to do it, it just tries to offer you um, a, a view of all the possibilities that lie within what you're doing already and what you, where you want to be going. Maybe that's a little vague, but that becomes quite practical <laughs> once you're there doing it. So th it is important, it's not, it, it's, it's a, um, um, it is not, you're not going to be told what to do. You're, you might be given some answers to your questions, but mostly those answers will come from you, from yourself, after some struggle. Hence the challenge. These are just, this is old, uh, as you can see. This is uh, 2011, but um, 
they're making the new list, which is going to include 2012, but they're not going to do it at the office until, um, I think, in a month. But I did want to show it to you anyway, so you can just sort of see what we've been doing. Um, of course, I want to impress you with the long list, the fact that the list is very long and full. Um, but it's just, you know, some of the, like I said, like if you look at the bottom of the right column, it says uh, Niels Atala's project, Rai, which now has won another award. Um, I can actually boast a little more by saying that um, Shell, which you might know by Scott Graham, uh, which I think might be on this list on the next page. I don't know, it's anywhere, somewhere here. Shell um, was by the Scottish filmmaker uh, Scott Graham. He, he made it and he won Best Film as well as the Foreign Press Award at the Torino Film Festival just this November. And then we have uh, also recently um, Pietra Brett Kelly. She made Maori Boy, which is someone on the list. She just won um, New Zealand Film Awards for Best Documentary Film. Um, she the film was produced by Jennifer Fox. I don't know if you know her, but she's also a Binger alumna. Um, and then there's Niels Atala and Lucy Kalmar, who won a production award at the Torino Film Lab meeting event, which was 70,000 euro. So it's, it's worth attending Binger. You get it right back. This is the map. Um, there's lots of dots, and there should be more dots, and there's more dots coming up from Africa and uh, more from India also. But um, you'll just have to look at our website, because this is one of the things that's on our website. And if you want to see, for example, I have a list of it too, of the UK filmmakers, you just go to the map and you click on the UK and you find out. Uh, this is just sort of in chronological order, order and it shifted a little bit. Um, the people from the UK who attended Binger in the last couple of years. Just to give you an idea of the type of, of maybe level of career or type of filmmakers that, um, that we welcome. Um, how many filmmakers are here? Are you all filmmakers mostly? Okay. Yeah. All right. Just, you want to look at it a little longer? <coughs> Is there anyone you recognize? Maybe? Okay. Ah, right. So, uh, this is the list of the filmmakers. We welcome, like I said, we welcome people from all over the world. We are kind of, you know, strict in um, selecting the people. Not only um, in terms of quality, but also in terms of um, geographical spread. That said, since we're in this um, period of transition, uh, and we want to try and open things up a little bit, uh, which now pertains mostly to the director's lab, we do, like, we wouldn't mind if, the, if a whole workshop would be full, filled with really talented UK people. So there's not a limit to how many people come from one particular area. And we're actually interested in trying to find a stronger collaboration with the UK, since um, the shorter workshops are probably more easily attended by people not able to travel from either Asia or uh, South America or um, any other faraway continent. And it would be nice to see if we can find a way in collaboration with any of the British institutions to um, make it a little easier for UK filmmakers to attend. So therefore, it's really interesting for you as a filmmaker to look at our website um, and look at all the different workshops that are part of the Director's Lab. It's not a very easy website to navigate, but at one point you will get there and you will see the whole list of workshops which are some of them for just for a couple of days some of them for a week and quite intense and expensive but i strongly encourage you to look at it and to see uh, if there's anything that you would like to attend um, since we're now also talking to some of the funding bodies here to see if we can help more uk filmmakers come over the other side of the river uh, canal so um, I'm going to show you two things, just because you know we're at a festival and we can talk and read slides, but I think maybe it's fun to show something. First, I'm going to show you something that I just understood hasn't um, been shown here in the UK yet. So I was sort of a from here. Uh, it's a it's a movie that we're extremely str uh, proud of. It's being hooked up now. So to continue more to speak. Um, it's Bullhead. I, I don't know, I bet has anyone has seen it already. I and mean, it's a, just a great example of, um, um, 
a very strong um, film that took a long time to make. And it's quite extraordinary and original. Uh, and it's been traveling all over the world. It, um, and then the second one I'm going to show you is a sh very short teaser uh, of a film uh, called Nevada by Ruth Paxton, who was, maybe you saw her at the list. She's a UK filmmaker who attended The Binger uh, in 2011. And she's actually tomorrow, Nevada, together with Brockhaven, by Ruth Paxton is showing as part of the um, London Short Film Festival in the ICA Theater at 3.30. So go check that out, just to give you an idea. I'll show you the teaser. Check that out tomorrow, 3.30, the ICA Short Film Festival. <laughs> that, in a nutshell, is what Binger has been, uh, is, and will be. We'll be adding more workshops. I strongly suggest you follow us on the social media. Um, I got a cue. Yeah. So follow us on Facebook and Twitter and uh, on our website. You can um, get yourself uh, on our mailing list and you'll be getting news flashes. And those will be going out, uh, you know, when application opens, when announcement of new um, workshops can be made. And um, so, and then whenever you see something you like, you can always contact us if you have questions. And um, yeah, I think maybe now it's time to ask if you have any questions. Yeah. I've, I've looked at your website a few times, and uh, if I'm right, one had to apply as either a director or a writer. You just said um, that a lot of people are writer directors. So how do you go about applying if you are a writer director? Well, you, the, the question is how do you go about applying if you are either a writer or a director? No, a writer hyphen director. You apply. You apply to, you know, depends on, on what you want to do. If you want to uh, um, attend any of the director gatored um, workshops, then you apply there and you would then be applying as a director. If you want to attend anything geared towards more specifically maybe uh, the writer part of you, then you apply there as, as the writer. And the writer, uh, the writer lab slash creative producers lab, most of the writers attending are writer directors. And maybe it's, it's also interesting to tell you that um, currently the current writers lab, which will go all the way through the Cinemart at Rotterdam Film Festival, and then it ends, um, there's 18 people and I think 11 projects. So some people come together with their creative producer. Uh, some people come by themselves as a writer-director. And there, I think, are three creative producers who've come without a project. So it's quite a mixed group of people uh, attending uh, that. And, you know, I mean, it's not, the rules and regulations are not so strict. So we, it, we always talk with people and see, um, you know, uh, what they want and if we, like I said, it's quite flexible and, and we try to be transparent about it, but, um, so does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Um, in, do you require from a fine director to have a uh, idea or the script uh, with them or there is a chance to meet a writer who can co like, collaborate with the director? You're asking if you apply as a writer, can you find your director, or the other way around? I'll do it around. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, we don't. In in that sense, we don't cater that type of networking. I mean, that. Um, um, but then again, it could very well be that you apply as a director and say, I, I want to, you know, maybe we can hook you up with a writer. Um, not so much probably as part of a, a workshop or a lab, but beforehand. Um, it might be um, a thing that you, you know, you'll, you'll ask me that and we'll think about it and we'll, then maybe somebody else, a writer, will ask us, do you have a director because I want to do something with, like, it's not part of what we do regularly, but it, it happens a lot. But we don't, like, it just happens. We don't specifically uh, recruit for that. So can you say something more about um, the director's yeah, well, the, the, like um, the director's lab um, now is um, basically it will allow three directors 
um, everybody is at a sort of a, a professional level and has made some films, a couple of short, maybe first feature. Um, three directors will attend the director's lab as a resident, an arts in resident program. Those three directors um, will have the opportunity to do all the workshops that are lined up from beginning to end. They can also say, you know, maybe uh, the second workshop, workshop with something about acting, I'm not that interested in, um, you know, I'll spend that time writing on my project or, or developing um, the project in a different way and then I'll, I'll, I'll join the bandwagon again um, with the next workshop. So it's a sort of a la carte menu, but if you want to get, you know, the full worth for your buck, then you can, you, you do the whole thing, but you can also do a, uh, uh, just whatever, you, you know, um, get, get from the menu what you think you need at that time. So that's really only for, that's only three people. Then the, all the other, all the workshops that are part of that whole lab um, are for directors. So um, you can say, I want to approach that feeling of a full lab, and you'll just apply to everything. It will just be a little more expensive, or it will be more expensive. Um, but we think that with all the workshops that we have lined up, there's not probably not going to be too many directors who want to do them all. So therefore, you can, you can as, as uh, outside participants, you can um, decide to join whatever workshop you, you, or apply for whatever workshop you want to. Um, and uh, all are separately priced. So the idea of a full lab is only really um, for three directors if they choose to follow all the workshops that are lined up. And the, the full group, ex group experience um, as the director's lab used to be is more with the writers slash creative producers lab which, is, uh, which starts in October. So that's, that's different, it's, it's changed, and we're gonna see how it's gonna work. And the groups per, uh, per workshop differ, but mostly you can say, you know, the, the more intensive participatory workshops will be about 12 to 15 people from all over. Is that, yeah? Good enough information, yeah. Anyone else? All the way back. Um, what's the uh, minimum age? Our legal age. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's not so much age or size or anything. It's um. It's you know, where you are, where you stand, and how how much you've done already, and how much of a voice comes through that, and how much um, we think you will you will benefit from the challenge, and how strongly you are motivated, uh, and can explain that to us. And that's really all. I mean, that's enough. But um, you know, it's um. It's not age or, or like I said, no. I mean, um, you need a passport, and, like, you know. That's it. Who else? Yeah. Can you ask what's the percentage to um, fiction films to documentaries that you take on? Um, that's a good question. Um, something I didn't say, I think. Um, most of it is uh, narrative. Yeah. Most of it. I don't know the percentage. The writers, the writers directors lab is, I think, 100% narrative, um, and then the documentary uh, or the uh, the directors lab, I think, mostly also. We there was um, we have done a couple of uh, documentary labs actually, which then ended in Sheffield, um, and we don't have that lined up yet. So specifically, we, we are going to do, uh, a, which is going to be a commissioned workshop by the Dutch Film Fund, we are going to do a, um, s um, a workshop of I think two or three days, which is specifically geared for documentary filmmakers and it's about digital distribution. And we're doing that in, in collaboration with the Film Collaborative from New York, or America, and um, some other, I think Jennifer Fox also, who was uh, going to tell about how she um, used social media and different ways of building audiences in a very early stage of, of her um, project development and come tell uh, more about that. But I don't know if there will be enough room to open it up for the public since it's commissioned. We, we're hoping. And if not, and if it's a success, we'll just do it again and then open it up for people. So right now, not much documentary yet. Sorry. Anyone else? Sorry, 
do people tend to be at FEMA at a stage when they're seeking finance? Or do they tend to be, so they might still be working to have the strip and they're basically seeking finance? Or do people come when they're really at an early stage and maybe just have one or two drafts of the strip? And do you have a preference? The question is do we have a preference in terms of what stage the project is in, right? Um, I think for the writers um, slash creative producers lab, it's um, it varies, and you need to be. Um, what we discuss is where you want to be at at the end of the lab, and usually it's a um, next draft of the script, or maybe you're at a, even an earlier stage, and you want to in the end of the lab you want to have a very strong first draft, and. I don't think we have a preference. I think what we prefer is uh, when there's a sort of a mix. You know what I mean? So, you know, s some people really early and, and some people much more advanced, so you get more of a, uh, of a mix in that. But it's not, th there's not a preference in, in um, an not, not, not outspoken preference for what type of, um, I mean, obviously it needs to be at a stage where you don't have anything locked down. You know, everything locked down, there's no room for improvement, because then that would be sort of, you know, pointless to, to attend. And with the director's lab, um, I don't really know. I mean, it used to be that the director's lab was really geared towards preparing for a shoot. But then we thought, recently, we just thought, you know, if you, if you are preparing for a shoot, you're not gonna spend four months attending workshops. You can be preparing for a shoot. So maybe some of the things are interesting uh, for a director to do as you're preparing for shoot, maybe working with actors, for example, to try things out. But um, so that also is um, there's no preference there. I mean, it needs to be room in your process to attend, and it needs to be worthwhile. And um, but no. Yeah. Um, oh. No, no. Go on. Sorry. No, after you. Uh, cost. Uh, you, you said that um, if you kind of choose from the a la carte kind of approach to um, development help, um, that it costs more. Um, how do you, I mean, do you try and, because independent filmmakers are skin, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, independent filmmakers what? Are, are poor. <laughs> poor, um, yeah. And yeah. I mean, I guess if you're attached to, a, to something like the BFI or, or the old film council, you could get some help with yeah. paying the fees. But if you're not, if you are an independent, fully independent, then the, just help me with the, how you Yeah, well, the, the economic side of things is that we've also, that's what also one of the reasons why we thought maybe it's, it's more interesting for independent filmmakers to break it up, the director's lab, because if you're going to attend a director's lab for four months full time, you're not going to be able to make any money during that time. Uh, and that might be an, on top of the cost you make uh, to attend the lab and to live in Holland, you know, that's, for a lot of people that's just too much. Um, so um, I know, I don't know what the, cost of the writer's lab is yet. Um, I, honestly, I have no idea. I do know that the um, director's lab artist in resident <coughs> program is uh, four and a half thousand euros for those three spots that will then are allowed to the whole program or whatever they choose and pick. And we'll also try and help them um, to during that period of time stay in one of our residencies. Um, and the cost will vary and is open for negotiation. If you want to do that same home menu, but just as not as part of that resident program, um, then you would, for just to attend all the workshops, that would be, I think, seven and a half thousand euros. And you would be busy almost full time from March to June. So, and then, but you know, they're all, uh, they're all differently priced and all the prices are on the website. So you can see per workshop um, what the costs are. And you know, we have, some very expensive tutors coming in, and um, yeah, those are pricey. Yeah, but then again, that's the only thing you'll pay then, and the cost of being away, and the cost of finding a place to stay, which we of course will help you with, you know, um, are lower because it's a shorter period of time. So we hope that will enable uh, independent film, more independent filmmakers to attend more specifically to what they need. You with the red sweater. I, I was just going to ask if you could give a couple of examples of the actual workshops you run. I haven't had a chance to look at the website, so you might have covered it already. But when you're saying about uh, directors going into workshops, I just wanted a, a little example of what a couple of them might be, what they might entail. 
Right. Um, I know, um, for example, I've heard, uh, uh, I haven't been at Binger um, during one of the director's workshops since I started in September. I was there at the beginning of the writer's creative producer's workshop. And there, for example, there's, there's been one-on-one um, -on -one tutoring working on script. Script development is a big thing there. And we have various people from Europe coming in to work on, say, a full-time one-week um, process of uh, answering the questions you have in regards to your script. And you would be having one-on-one -on -one meetings with Franz Roden Kierkegaard or um, uh, Olivia Stewart, for example. And, um, but there's also a very intense workshop which is about music and the use of music um, with two, I uh, forget their name, advisors from um, Denmark. So that will be, um, um, there's a, um, and part of that is, for example, shooting some scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, there will be some production. Uh, there's not much production actually in the whole Binger thing, unfortunately. But um, so, so it's, it's a lot of script development and um, going into depth with, um, for example, sound. And we want to add, in the first half of the year, we want to add something uh, about editing also. We're now negotiating with someone here to see if she can set up a, uh, um, like a two, three day sort of intense editing workshop, which we think would be really interesting, maybe especially for writers, since that's often more geared towards directors, but maybe writers could benefit from that also. So that's, you know, it's, it's, if you look at the website, it will, it will tell you a little bit about it. And um, if you want more like from the floor sort of experiment or um, uh, experience uh, stories, you know, we can just put you in contact with someone, no problem, tell you more about it, like how it was. You've been already. Can she go first? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just wondering because the writers and the uh, producers are paired up, those that aren't paired up, right? In the writing course. No, s some writer directors come with together, their producer. Yeah. But yeah. those that don't, they're paired up together? That will eventually uh, uh, um, probably happen. I mean, the, the writer's lab, um, you're, you're with, a, with a group of, say, uh, you know, now it's 18 people, yeah. and um, that during certain periods of, of uh, topics, yeah. uh, themes, uh, you are then again divided up in groups of four or five, I think. And, and um, yeah, then you're teamed up. And if in the end you will team up with a producer for the whole thing, that sort of will have to happen or not. Okay. Because I'm just wondering how you have a class with writers and producers and how the classes, how you can combine that. It's, it's well, the, I think from what I understand is that the creative producers uh, um, want to attend to understand more about um, the whole process of, of developing a script and a story and, mm -hmm. and uh, in order to become more creative as, as producers. Um, so they, they, in the beginning they do stand back a little bit and then, you know, hopefully that's, that is the aim, we will participate more and um, so um, there will be more participation and more um, fruit. Okay, so they'll, they'll probably also give feedback on the scripts and... Of course, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the writers are the ones that are writing in the... Pr yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I mean, and like I said, they, you know, they want to attend to, to learn more from it. And, yeah. um, and maybe in the beginning they don't know that much about it yet, but they... It's all very um, intense, and especially if the groups are, are then divided up into smaller groups, uh, you will have to collaborate, and I'm sure they'll say something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they'll speak. Yeah, no, <coughs> Sorry. they're all listed on, on our website with stories. I guess a couple of years ago they did interviews with all the advisors, so you can sort of say, uh, you, can, you can read, first of all, what they think of Binger, I think, and then also uh, where they come from, like what their point of approach is. Yeah. I can name you a couple of names. We have, like I said, Franz Rodenkirchen, I don't know if you know him, but he's involved in Berlin and Torino Film Lab. And we have Olivia Stewart, uh, who I think is from the UK but lives in Italy, and then we have um, Ian Seller, you might know him, from the UK. Um, uh, we have Christian Ralph, who's also from here, you might know him. Um, and, you know, uh, Judith Weston, I think she comes in only once a year to do the director-oriented uh, workshops. 
and, and people, um, you know, um, some Dutch ed uh, script editors also, who've been um, doing things at Torino Film Lab and the town campus in Berlin. So we sort of um, circulate a couple of people between us. But, but you know, there's a whole list of them and a really long text uh, about them and from them. So, But then again, if you have, we, we might be adding some more also, but this is sort of the core group. I just wondered if there were any um, documentary specialists on there or whether it's exclusively... Yeah, there's one Dutch documentary specialist, John Apple. I don't know if you know him. Um, and so that's... One of the uh, and Heidi Honigman, do you know her? She's Dutch also. She's one of the big Dutch documentary filmmakers. Mm -hmm. She she's been doing a lot of um, a la carte, one on one sort of sessions, like one live session, two Skype follow ups to get the documentary filmmaker, um, you know, to to the next stage of a script or development, whatever they're working on. We do that too, this is, which is a sort of private sessions. Do we help with raising finance from for projects that have gone through our lives? Not so much, no. I mean, we do have a network, and we, and we do, of course, our, um, you know, we recommend projects, and we do help you in terms of um, if we know of something you you don't, we'll tell you. But we don't necessarily um, function as as a as a finance aid. No, though you know that might change after my talks with the UK here. Yeah. So uh, keep an eye. On, uh, you know, on the website we'll be announcing that, um, but that uh, is not specifically for documentary filmmakers, I think. But maybe. Excellent. Keep up the good work. <laughs> One last question. One. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned that you're a Can you tell us a bit about how Dinger helped Bullhead get made? How we helped Bullhead get made? I think the, um, the lab. The, the, the project being developed into what it was. it was. From what I understand, it was quite a different approach to the project, and he sort of had to peel it all off, his, his previous ideas of what he had, of where he wanted to go with the story, and then sort of piece it back together over the course of the lab, and then, um, uh, and then went on like, trying to get it financed. And I think he also met someone in the lab who he then uh, continued to collaborate with. Um, so it was just a setting and, um, and him working on the um, script, getting it to a next level, which from what I understand was quite, you know, he turned it inside out, sort of. Quite a while, um, I think 2009? Quite a, yeah, it takes a while. Yeah, it said, it said uh, February 17th. On the trailer, which was the American trailer, which was made because it was an Oscar uh, yeah, contender. Um, and that was actually 17th last year. So I'm so surprised that it's not showing here until soon. Because it's been finished for almost at least a year, maybe a year and a half. Oh, that was the last question. So yeah. Um, that's it. If you, you, know, if you want to... Uh, Else to, to ask or to, to you want to know more about the application process or you want to know about deadlines, definitely uh, Facebook is, is most up to date, I would say, with you know, the current smaller details, but the website is, is extensive.